Hi, it's Dwyer. DwyerCrime.blog. RichardDwyer.co. Both free sites. Let's talk crime. Let's talk police brutality. Let's try to offer some numbers and some perspective. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I've been here online, I've made videos on the George Floyd case. I would have voted to acquit, right? It's a trial. The only question for me is whether the prosecution has proven their case beyond a reasonable doubt. In my opinion, they did not come close. I have no idea how a lay jury could listen to the former medical examiner of the state of Maryland tell you that the cause of death was undetermined. Undetermined. And then to hear the Hennepin County medical examiner, Dr. Andrew Baker, tell you that George Floyd had a lethal dose of fentanyl in his system, that George Floyd had a 90% blocked artery. He had another artery that was 70% blocked. He also had methamphetamine in his system. And according to the autopsy, he did not have any blocked airways, right? I don't believe it's my job as a juror to sit there and to try to suddenly learn medicine. When I hear that a person has a lethal dose of fentanyl and other health problems and that they died of a heart attack, then I don't know why I would necessarily favor the prosecution set of experts over the defense's set of experts. Let me also point out, too, that when I hear that he did not have blocked airways, that there's no particular hemorrhaging, right? The prosecution, by the way, pointed out that you only get particular hemorrhaging in 50% of the suffocations. Well, let's just figure this out here. So you've already cut in half the likelihood that the defendant is guilty right um, based on this evidence viewing this as a trial and not some political event I would have voted to acquit Derek Chauvin on all three charges right now let me just point out that that does not mean and should not be implied to mean that I somehow support police brutality but let's go further here because I really do believe that all of us need to understand the big picture. And there is a big picture. There are times when the press's interest splits from our interest. And by our, I mean people like me, consumers of information, right? The public. If the press is handed a story that fits with their format. In other words, it has a visual component that's ready-made for television, right? It involves salacious subject matter, race, for example, that many people are interested in. Then sometimes we actually lose an idea of just how often the occurrence occurs. So understand, these police brutality cases, a George Floyd incident, for example, the incident in Ohio recently involving the teenage girl who tried to stab someone and ended up getting shot and killed, right? Those are already made for TV. A producer can just put them on TV. We already watch reality TV. Here you have a real life crime reality, someone getting killed or someone dying in police custody. It's jarring. It gets ratings. 
But let's offer some numbers, because what doesn't get ratings is a conversation about the need for two-parent households in terms of helping young kids develop. The fact that, unfortunately, the family structure in African-American households has been shattered to the point where 70% of African-American kids right now end up losing their fathers at a young age. Father either deserts the family or, for whatever reason, isn't with the family. Right? That doesn't get ratings. So what's being presented here are outlier events. What do I mean by that? I want people to understand that black men are eight to nine times more likely to be murder victims than any other group in America. Right? Eight to nine times. Well, let me just make a few points here. There are roughly, and we're rounding off numbers here, 7,500 African-American deaths by murder each year in the United States. 7,500. Again, I'm rounding the number. Now understand, the number of people shot and killed, number of African-Americans shot and killed by police is about 300 people a year. Right? 300. So, when we start talking about police shootings of African Americans, understand we're already overlooking 7,200 murders of minorities. We're focusing on a subgroup here. 300 Right? 300. Now, we understand, especially after looking at the film of the teenage girl who got shot in Ohio, we understand that some of these police shootings are justified. Right? You understand, cops are armed for a reason. They'll show up, sometimes they're shot at first. Right? Not every police shooting, and by the way, the 300 police shootings that's by cops of all races in killing African Americans, right? By the way, that number is less than the number of white people killed by police each year. Let's just put it in perspective, right? So, you have 300 African Americans, roughly, killed by police each year. Now, let's be... aggressive here and just speculating that one in five of the shootings is a wrongful shooting. In other words, this is a shooting where, you know, the cops for no reason are shooting either an unarmed African-American or someone who is putting down their gun who did not need to be shot to be arrested. Right? So let's say 20% of the 300 shootings are wrongful shootings. Folks, 20% of 300 is 60. Right? That's 60 deaths. Out of 7,500 each year. Right? 60. Now, the 60 is too much. Any wrongful shooting by police is too much. Right? But the next time some well meaning athlete or some well meaning celebrity 
or some well-meaning media outlet, cable news network, or some outfit that wants to take advantage of a media-ready story, tries to focus on just the 60 deaths and tries to overlook the 7,440 deaths, murders, that don't involve police shootings in the African American community. It's my hope that the rest of us will say, hey, player, aren't you talking about less than 1%, let me repeat that, less than 1% of the murders in the African American community. Shouldn't we be talking about the other 99%? Since we have sociological data since we know that there's a class component, right? Whites and blacks aren't that different when you actually factor in economic background, family structure, right? Shouldn't we be talking about things like that? Shouldn't we also be talking about the number of deaths that are related to drug trafficking? and how our laws might impact that. Right? Shouldn't, shouldn't the conversation be much more advanced than a conversation where some well-meaning athlete is warning cops? Right? When, quite frankly, if you dig deeply into the numbers, you might find that based on the number of interactions with law enforcement, the number of deaths of African Americans at the hands of law enforcement don't exceed the number of white deaths at the hands of law enforcement based on the number of interactions. Understand, again, Black men are eight to nine times more likely to be a victim of homicide than other groups, right? African-Americans interface with law enforcement much more than other groups, right? So I hope people see the full picture here. Understand, in 2019, if you look at the numbers, more people died in plane crashes than the number of African Americans killed by police that year. So what I'm going to do here in the comment section of this YouTube video is I'm going to put some links so that the viewers here can do their own investigation, right? I'll put a link to murder victims in the U.S. by race, ethnicity, and gender, right? I'll put other links. I'll put a link to the Washington Post's excellent database that details police shootings over the last few years. But what I do want people to consider here is that all the talk, all the talk about police shootings of African Americans is a discussion about 1% of the total murders of African Americans in a given year. Right? 1%. Let's not ignore the other 99%. It'd be powerful. It'd be very powerful. If athletes 
in talking about violence against minorities. Actually start talking about the African-American family structure, how it's been impacted by government programs since the 1960s. Right, it'd be interesting having an athlete actually talk about the number of two-parent African-American families that existed in the 1960s versus now after all of these government programs, whether the programs are all positive or whether they carry some negatives that might lead to fatherless families. Right? It'd be interesting if these athletes or celebrities started talking about or emphasized a bit more the carnage caused by the war on drugs on the African-American community, the incarceration rates that have separated families, that have led to teenagers out on the street without role models. Right, so I'm all for focusing on police violence, the 1% of the total cases. I myself have been here online doing multiple videos on the George Floyd case. I've discussed other cases, the Breonna Taylor case, right? As well as other cases. Go to DwyerCrime.blog for the full catalog, right? But let's recognize the scope. The police shootings of African Americans is just one small part of the total number of murders, right? Again, 300 African Americans are killed by cops each year, roughly, right? If you believe, and even this number is way too high, Right? If you believe that one in five is wrongfully killed by law enforcement, well, that would make the number 60. Just remember that 7,500 African Americans, roughly, are murder victims each year. Far more than 60. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I'll leave some links in the comment section. Please, don't be bashful in leaving your comments in the comment section. Thanks for stopping by.